Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on the channel, we're going to take another look into our um, series that we started regarding Humble Yourself. And this is going to be a part three in reference to that revelation, uh, Humble Yourself. And today we're going to begin with uh, the book of Matthew, where I'm led to first to actually talk about this revelation and this this is what Jesus Christ has to say in the New Testament in the Gospels that were written uh, basically documenting the things that he said when he was here on earth in the physical with the disciples and they had an opportunity to be with him touch him and to just ask them any kind of question that they uh, were confused about or had certain you know uh, Inquisitions, I should say, they were interested in knowing something about a certain area or of discussion. So they asked him regarding who would be the greatest in the kingdom. Okay, and it starts off here in Matthew chapter 18. He says, "At the same time came the disciples to Jesus, and they were saying, What is the greatest, or who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven?'" And Jesus called a little child to him. And set him in the midst of the of them, okay? Because they wanted to know who would be considered someone that's the greatest. And so Jesus said, I say unto you, except you be converted and becomes as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. For whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying that the one that humbles himself under the mighty hand of God will be the one that is referred to as the greatest in the kingdom you know that the heavenly father decreed, decrees and declares as the greatest and he said whosoever shall receive such little child in my name receives me but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me it were, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he will drown in the depth of the sea, okay? And because he says, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense may come. So he's basically staying on topic, humble yourself. He's saying that whomever comes under him, okay, whoever humbles himself as a child, and a child is, again, uh, will be more willing to uh, follow a child usually has a lot of questions asks a lot of questions doesn't actually just take for granted anything uh, that they know because really as a child you don't really know anything and that's how it is too when you come into the kingdom of God you know you don't really know anything unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you and gives you the information so to actually go and assume certain things about the Word of God or about God would then you know, uh, indicate that a person is living and uh, per perceiving off of their own knowledge. And that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to question him, ask questions regarding the kingdom so that we can be more knowledgeable uh, in what he wants and what he prefers and what is his will. Okay, that's why we actually have the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us to pray for our daily bread and uh, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So another book I'm led to from the Gospels is going to be uh, the book of Luke. And Jesus Christ, again, he's talking to some of the uh, disciples. No, actually it's chapter 14. I gave you a verse. So it's chapter 14 and then verse 7. We're going to start with. So it begins here. Now, at the beginning of chapter 14, the Pharisees, it says, It came to pass as it went as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had uh, this disease called dropsy. And Jesus answered and spoke to the uh, lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Now, he's just asking them that question just to get a response, because he knows that he can heal any day at any time he wants to. But he's just asking, and for the sake of our admonition, too. 
he says, and they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out of the out of the pit on the Sabbath day? Okay? So he's saying, You won't wait till the Sabbath day. If it's not the Sabbath day, you will do it right then and there to get it. So that's where healing comes in. He's saying it's done any time. It's necessary and needed. So and they could not answer him again by these things that he said. So then in verse 7, where we actually go into the revelation that we're getting to about humble yourself, he put forth a parable to those which were there, or which were there and that were invited. He says, when he marked how they closed, oh, oh, excuse me, when he marked how they chose out of the chief room, saying to them, when thou art invited of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, unless a more honorable man than you be invited to, you know, of him. And he that invited you and him come and say to thee, give this man, you know, your seat, and thou begin to, uh, with shame, to take the lowest seat in the room. And he says, but when thou art invited, go to sit down in the lowest room, that when he, the he that is invited, that comes, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship." glory in thy presence of them that sit at meat with you for whosoever exalts himself shall be base and he that humbles himself shall be exalted so what he's saying regarding uh this parable is that he's talking about those that are invited let's say to a wedding he said if you're invited to a wedding and you decide to go sit in the chief seats of the wedding okay but then someone comes in that uh was more uh, let's see uh, elegant or whatever than you sitting in the chief seats and you decide to not give them that seat and then he's saying here that if they decide to uh, go sit in the back instead of sitting in the front seat basically he's wanting us to realize that okay coming and sitting yourself in the highest seat rather than sitting in the lowest seat and be in the actual in wedding would be one that is exalting himself, stating, giving himself the um, admonition or giving himself the worship rather than the one that would go and sit in the lower seat. So he's saying in that particular instance, the one that's sitting in the lower seat would then be exalted to the higher seat by God because he chose to lower himself and sit in the back seat rather than the one that sat in the front seat. Okay, so I want to make sure we grasp the understanding of this because the way he says parables and that sometimes the way they are written in certain holy Bibles can make you kind of confused. But what we want to do is make sure we get the understanding of it So he, because he refers to a wedding in this parable and is referred to seats and sitting and how individuals are seated at weddings. Okay, and he says that if the one comes to the wedding, he's invited to the wedding and he sits in the front, that one has basically exalted himself okay instead of sitting in the back he would have not exalted himself but being humble just sat in the back of the wedding okay as opposed to the one sitting in the front and the one that is sitting in the front that has exalted himself is the one that the god of heaven would humble as the one that sits in the back seat okay so that was the actual parable that he told regarding humbling yourself and then he tells us in verse 11 that whosoever exalts himself shall be humble and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So in doing that, humbling yourself under God's authority, under his reign, under his rulership, under his commandments, you know, and what he says in the word of God, and what he says about certain things is his will and that we are to humble ourselves under that command. Okay, so another book that I am drawn to is going to be the book of Daniel and this book is going to give us in this chapter it's going to give us an example of an individual who did exalt himself and how God did humble that individual and then unfortunately ended up taking him into death because he exalted himself over and above God okay and as we read the story uh, we're going to take it, it because it is coming from an old book, the book of Daniel. We're taking it, we're making and looking at a reflection. We're reflecting on an old book 
for a revelation for the new today okay and we're going to use this as an example and a revelation for what can happen today as it refers to the kingdom of God and those that are in leadership and then those that are under leadership okay so uh, again we're, it's the book of Daniel and Daniel uh, we know he was a prophetic mouthpiece chosen by God and his name is defined as God is my judge okay that is what Daniel's name is defined as so here in chapter 5 it starts off with Bill Chesar and actually I'm going to start with chapter 4 verse 37 okay because King Nebuchadnezzar says I King Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven for all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to obey okay now he's saying that after he's been walking in pride and God has abased him he's humbled him but now his son Belshazzar that's who this particular uh, chapter is going to speak about him King Belshazzar it says made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand so Belshazzar whilst he tasted the wine he commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem and that the king and his princes his wives and his concubines might drink from them okay so here this king Belshazzar has requested for the uh, the gold vessels silver and gold vessels to be brought to him during a feast that he's given a celebration for the people in the celebration to drink from those vessels now these vessels came from out of the house of God okay now we look at that in the as a revelation for humbling yourself in the New Testament vessels in the house of God would be considered the saints okay so we can look at King Nebuchadnezzar uh, King Belshazzar as a, a priest okay a pastor an individual in leadership because he was king and that's what kings are leaders and they're in uh, positions of leaderships and they have a kingdom okay so he commanded that these vessels be brought to him and then they brought them to him the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God and the king and the princess and his wives they began to drink from them they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone okay so notice how when they did do that they began to praise those gods from which the uh, vessels came okay and in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote this and then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against another so there as they began to drink from out of these vessels that were brought in from the Lord's house there was a finger that started to write on the wall okay and that was supernatural it was a supernatural presence of God writing and mad an angel no doubt because of what they had done to the vessels that belonged to God okay then cried aloud uh, to bring he so then he asked that all the astrologers and soothsayers come in to see if they could interpret what this message was that was written on the wall okay and uh, no one could do it so therefore then I'm going to skip around for the sake of time here because we're moving on in the time on this video so then he requested and heard about Daniel that he you know he was a uh, part of the holy gods he was a child of the holy gods and he was good at interpreting dreams and interpreting certain things and his father had already placed him in a high position because he had interpreted some of his dreams so they asked for Daniel to come in and so Daniel did come in and he did begin to uh, interpret what the words were said or written on the wall and then uh, let's see here I'm gonna start back with verse 20 still in chapter 5 of Daniel he says but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him okay so here Dan uh, Daniel is talking about Nebuchadnezzar King Nebuchadnezzar which was Belshazzar's father okay so he's telling him and reminding him how God had taken the kingdom from him because he lifted himself up above God 
and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast okay he changed everything in his surrounding he took his kingdom and majesty from him he basically humbled him and so he's telling Daniel is explaining to him and he begins to go into it in more depth in verse 22 he says and thou his son O Belshazzar has not humbled thine heart thou that knowest all this okay even though you knew God had humbled your dad he's telling him you still didn't humble yourself so therefore and drinking from the vessels that were a part of the Lord's house so but you lifted yourself up he says against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before you and thou and thy lords and thy wives and everybody began to drink wine in them and praise the gods of silver and gold so that's why God sent in an angel to actually do this writing on the wall before him and the God in whose hand uh, thy breath is and whose are all the ways has thou not glorified okay so he's saying you didn't give God glory you began to praise the gods of the silver the gold and the, of the vessels instead of the God of the, whose house you brought the vessels up out of so then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written for you and then David goes on to explain to Belshazzar what the writing meant and then uh, in verse uh, let's see here 29 because they offered Daniel uh, gifts for being able to interpret the writing but Daniel did not want the gifts but they still gave them to him and then verse 30 it says Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans was slain okay and then Darius and uh, the Median took the kingdom so the kingdom was given over to someone else too because of this disobedience of uh, Belshazzar and him deciding to worship the silver and the gold vessels and the gods of the, those vessels instead of worshiping the Lord from which the vessel came out of. Now, if we look at that in Revelation to today in the kingdom of God, we could say vessels again, saints of God in the kingdom, pastors, priests, kings, those in position over and leadership over individuals in the kingdom, or if they begin to even speak over the individuals in the kingdom and they begin to use them, misuse them. Okay, because that's what this basically is about with Belshazzar. He misused the vessels that came from out of the Lord's house and therefore exalting himself over those vessels and then praising the gods of those vessels. And so as we look at that in the revelation for today, an individual doing that would be using the saints in that particular same manner, using and exalting himself over or themselves, I should say, over the kingdom and using them for their own purpose and their own pleasure because that's what they did that's what Belshazzar did with those drinking vessels he used it for his own purpose and his own pleasure at his own ceremony of celebration when that was not what they were intended to be used for because they were a part of the Lord's house okay so I hope this blesses you and helps you in the mighty name of Christ Jesus God loves you always and forever and that is going to bring us to the conclusion of this particular revelation regarding Humble Yourselves, Part 3. And I will look forward to our next video as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Video Channel. But until then, God be with you.